Welcome back, Femme viewers. It, I really have missed every single one of you. It's been a while since we connected, and I really hope you've all been keeping well, taking time for each and every one of you, making self-care a priority, and remembering to breathe, something we spoke a lot about over the pandemic. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome my guest, entrepreneur and female boss, Mallory Parker, the founder of Parker Hugh. Hi, Mallory. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Mallory, we are super excited to have you here with us today because we are going to talk about your business, your vision, and you. But most importantly, we're here to talk about shoes. That is the foundation of Parker Hugh, and that is my passion. So I'm going to ask you, Parker Hugh, being a Canadian brand, owned and operated up and coming luxury shoes. How did you land here? What inspired you to follow this incredible, I, I want to say every girl's dream, and turn it into a thriving business? So I will say I've always had kind of a fascination with shoes, whether it was sneakers, whether it was um, the flats or the heels, because when I was in high school, the big thing was the flats and the sneakers. So um, and the boots. So I was more of a sneaker head, like I was more like, oh, I really like sneakers and I can kick back. I can do the tomboy thing. But then when I finished high school, that's kind of when I had the infatuation with heels. So for me, I'm short in stature. Me too, me too. <laughs> so for me, it was like, I put on the heels. It's like a confidence boost. And I didn't realize that till much later on um, after high school, because high school, I wasn't allowed to wear those kinds of things. And the first time I did wear heels was prom. And then I kind of like realized like, oh, oof, like this gives me a different kind of feel. And it, and it really started to really like affect my posture and how I spoke and how. So it was really a confidence boost. And then also like growing up, my dad was a musician. And so a lot of the pieces that I do create are named after songs. Oh. And um, my mom was kind of like my fashion icon. She still always had that umph because it was like, if you're in the salon, you have to stand out. For me growing up, it was like she always had like a statement piece. She always had something like, um, like one piece that was louder than the other. So she always wore something that kind of just stood out. And for me, when I created Parker Hugh, I wanted to incorporate my mom, I wanted to incorporate my father, I wanted to incorporate my sister because they all impacted my life in such a way. And I wanted to create statement pieces for women to stand and spoke without speaking. I love the way you describe that. It sounds so empowering. I'm going to ask you a question. If you were to describe your target audience, that woman that you think about when you design your footwear verse the target audience covers um every woman that is determined to do something with their self with their life for my shoes i wanted it to target an audience that maybe they don't have to say as much but you'll remember something about that woman whether it be her shoes the way she um, speaks eloquently, um, but it, it covers all grounds of whatever position that you're in. There has to be a statement, a, something that resonates. So that is my target audience. I love that. I love that. What You started out speaking about confidence and how you design to inspire confidence in women who wear your shoes and I think you just summed that up so beautifully when you spoke to that feeling of empowerment that your shoes will hopefully give their wearer so that they are memorable that they create an impression and they truly leave their mark their unique mark just like each pair of your shoes is a unique piece of art 
Now you come from a very artsy background. You have creative parents, although in very different aspects, there is an element of creativity to every element, it sounds like, of your upbringing. Yeah. How did you start your business? How did you know that this is what you wanted to do? Is this your first foray into entrepreneurship? Did you have a former career? How did you get here? So for me, I worked in the retail background. I worked in management. I worked in so many spaces, but I never quite identified with the entire role with having an outlet to create something besides like formatting and very structured things. So for me, I always had, I always had an eye for creativity and I, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur per se, because I, I knew I wanted something for myself. I wanted something to speak to me. I wanted something to speak to my soul. And for me, coming into entrepreneurship, it wasn't like a familiar face for me. But once I stepped into it, I started to understand, like, this is actually who I wanted to be. It was, it, I wanted something that spoke to every single part of my creativity. So for me, entrepreneurship just kind of fell into my lap. And then I started with a program. Um, it, it was out in Whitby that helped me create a business plan, helped me kind of shape who or what I wanted Parker Hugh to be. So you touch on something really interesting there that I think that so many thriving, aspiring entrepreneurs don't always think about. And that is the support to get all of your ducks in a row. You speak yeah. about a business plan, financial projections, being able to take your vision and turn it into something tangible. Yeah, It's amazing that you had the, the foresight to be able to anchor yourself with an organization that could help you build those bridges and get to that point. And that's something that I know we will have a future femme episode about, which will be about creating a business plan and the importance of having all of those pieces for any aspiring entrepreneur. I'm so glad that you touched on that. I think that might be the first time we've actually had that highlighted on one of our segments. So I'm so glad that you brought that to light. That's beautiful. I'm going to ask you, how the last two years where the world has essentially been on pause has affected you and your business and how you may have had to think differently or pivot or maybe have had the opportunity to develop even more. What, what did the pandemic look like for you personally, but also for Parker Hugh as a company? So with Parker Hugh, um, like I said, 2017 is when I registered the business officially and I started to find funding in certain areas and stuff like that because I was a creative, I was part of that program. And then I just got familiar with how I should go about funding. Now, when it came in 2002, sorry, 2018, I was able to start up with some fashion shows, pop-up shops, things to get kind of my work, my, um, the word out there for Parker Hume. Um, I was a part of art galleries and things like that. And I was blessed because it just came at a time where things were just falling into place. And then 2020 hit. So <laughs> it, it started to shape it a little bit different because even when I, um, I even started traveling with Parker Hugh at some point and I went to Miami and I was able to showcase in a store and then the pandemic came in and kind of like shut everything down so how it impacted Parker Hugh is that I couldn't be a part of fashion shows which I really dreamed of being a part of but it really allowed everything to be quiet and allowed me to brainstorm on how I wanted to approach my marketing with online presence. So it came to a point where everything was shut down and I really started to just have photo shoots to create, to, to have some eyes on Parker Hugh on, on social media. And it really helped with my online um, 
marketing definitely hit at a time where I wasn't thinking about those things and it helped me shape my online presence. That's really inspiring. I know that for so many businesses, digital is the future, you know, being able to have your impact on social media and the fact that you truly walked into that, embraced it and have seen a global reach to a business that may have taken longer to hit that many audiences all at once. That's, it's really incredible. <laughs> Valerie, this has been truly, truly inspiring. I'm so happy that you've been able to share your business journey with us. Tell us a little bit more about where you see Parker Hugh going in the next few years. What next celebrity are we going to see wearing your beautiful shoes? What's next for your business? What's next for you? Well, I'm hoping once everything opens up, I have some things lined in, in line to be a part of a few fashion shows in the local area in Toronto and in Durham region. Um, but I'm hoping to travel a lot more and getting, I have a few connections in Dubai and I'm, I've really kind of been strengthening those. So I'm, I'm wanting to travel with Parker Hugh. I would love to have a store at some point, but to just kind of get the word out there instead um, is my main focus. So traveling with Parker Hugh. And I, I managed to do that um, when I was out in Miami for a little bit. I heard a rumor and I need the story to this rumor <laughs> that your shoes are being worn by the lead character on one of Oprah's top streaming shows. Kings yeah. of Napa, is that, is that, am I correct? Is it really that show that I've heard so much about that your yeah. shoes are being worn on? How did that happen? That's huge. Oprah knows those shoes. <laughs> Oprah. <Right? laughs> At least they've been in the presence of her, right? <laughs> yes. Um, I actually came across this opportunity. Um, sometimes I will be in contact because in contact with stylists, and you just never know who is a fan and will spread the word. And for me, it was word of mouth. And a stylist. The funny thing is, I remember before I even started Parker Hugh, I remember seeing the stylist around, but I didn't, I had no clue she was a stylist. And it wasn't until I started Parker Hugh that I kind of started to see like little things that she was doing. And I'm like, no, she has to be a stylist. And she, and it wasn't even her that contacted me. It was another person who was also a stylist and she was covering different things. And just word of mouth connecting the dots. I just, they actually were interested in purchasing the shoes and I was like, oh, okay, no problem. And she had actually made work. She actually had contacted me to say that um, there was an opportunity for the Kings of Napa. So I was like, oh, okay. And it just got into the right hands. It really just did. And Kings of Napa, here we are <laughs> in this Aries. It's unbelievable. Oh my gosh, how <laughs> exciting. How exciting is that? Now, I, I, my, my next question for you is one I think that a lot of women probably have, and that's how do you balance? How involved are you in all the different aspects of your business? I know you, you speak with such passion when you talk about design and the creative process around your business, but somebody actually has to be out there pounding the pavement too. So how many hats do you wear or have you been able to successfully bring on people to help you grow your business, to delegate? How do you balance? How do I balance? I wear all the hats. So if I need to figure it out, I got to figure it out. If I need taxes done, I need to find my accountants. I need to find my business account, like my business accountants. If I need to uh, create a marketing strategy, I delegate it to um, who can create my proxies, my digital proxies and things like that. If I need to um, 
create a business plan. I'm the one that's doing all the work. If I have questions, I have to figure out the answer. And this really threw me, like Parker Hugh actually threw me into it because I'm I'm actually not a very talkative kinds of person. <laughs> I'm usually pretty quiet. And it it allowed me to have conversations with people and start to expand my mind into different areas I didn't think that I needed to cover. And being the marketing person and focused on online presence and finding followers and being interested in the financials and figuring out what I need to create for that and educating myself in financial literacy. And there's so many aspects to Parker Hugh. It's not just designing a shoe and throwing it out there. I have to speak with vendors. I have to speak with, um, manufacturers I have to try and get the best materials I want that I see in my mind so I'm the creative behind the design if I need to do a pop-up shop I'm the one that's there if I can delegate it so that I can have an assistant then I have to do that but I wear all the hats and if I have to figure out an answer I have to go figure it out I have to get an answer so, so where I, do you make time for Mallory what how do you make sure that Mallory is taken care of. We talk a lot on Femme TV about self-care. Yep. Tell us a little bit about how a thriving female boss mm -hmm. who is absolutely wearing every hat under the sun still makes time to make herself a priority. Um, had like a downtime because I had gotten to a car accident and it kind of gave me a jolt of reality that life is short. And I went through a phase of just calming down my overthinking and I actually started to learn how to meditate. And um, I read this really good book, Souls of a Tether, or sorry, um, what's it? it's something of a tethered soul. And it allowed me to teach myself how to meditate and calm the mind down with the overthinking. And that book really changed my life. And it helped me shape what I wanted for myself. And it just got me on the right path. I it's so inspiring. You know, I, I hear this story from successful women all over, of all ages, of all walks of life. And it is when they, they stop. They take that time to exhale, that they're able to give more, mm -hmm. find more meaning, delve into more creativity, and help to continue on their journey. Whether that's meditation, whether that's exercise, whether that's travel, you did touch on that as well. Mm -hmm. There are so many ways for us to just stop this is amazing well i wish you continued success i'm so inspired and i think so many of our viewers are as well by the fact that you've been able to build your business almost entirely virtually and still see so much success you know when you don't have a storefront you often our minds are thinking how am i going to reach clients and you touched on something so motivational and that was thinking differently and exploring other avenues to reach in your case a global potential customer base and that's something I think we can all take away from your business's success to date and hopefully continued success yeah. and growth I personally cannot wait until I get my hands on my first pair of Parker Hugh shoes. And I plan to do my next interview with my feet up on my desk. So those okay. shoes are front and center. <laughs> so everyone can see your beautiful designs. Mallory, thank you so, so much once again, on behalf of myself yeah. and all of the Femme TV audience for taking some time to speak with us today. It was such a pleasure.